Hello and welcome to Auth Made Easy with Amazon Cognito and Appercept AWS SDK for Delphi. I'm Richard Hatherall from Appercept, author of Appercept AWS SDK for Delphi and Embarcadero MVP for Delphi. So let's jump straight into Amazon Cognito and what is it? So it's an identity platform for web and mobile apps. It's a user directory. It's an authentication server. It's an authorization service for OAuth2 access tokens and AWS credentials. So these features are all things that most modern platforms want, but they are, unless you are building an identity provider yourself, they are not your core features. So to develop them, to, to get started in your application, um, these are blockers to you actually getting to what you really want to build. If you're building the next generation uh, sales platform, you need identity services to know who's logging in and doing what on your platform, um, but you um, don't necessarily need to have built all of the mechanisms for providing identities. Um, you know, it's, it's a, a pretty complicated business uh, when you consider all of the things you need to take care of. So that's why services like Amazon Cognito exist. Uh, they let us get going much faster. So let's jump uh, straight into Delphi and see uh, a demo of how this all works. So here in Delphi, I've got the Cognito demo open from the Appercept AWS SDK samples repository. Um, I'm just gonna run this and, and we'll uh, straight away see what it does. Uh, this has loaded a document here, and this document is stored on Amazon S3 in a bucket that is not publicly accessible, um, and uh, it can only be accessed using AWS credentials uh, Cognito Identity Pools has issued some unauthenticated access credentials here, uh, which has granted me access. If I now click on the sign in, I get a dialog pop up here. And as long as I get the username and password right, I should get an authenticated user access document. So it's doing the same thing. It's just loading a document from a different bucket that is protected so only authenticated users are allowed to access it. So I'll sign out now. You can see that that will return us back to guest user access. Uh, so what uh, I hope to show you in the next couple of demos is uh, the building blocks of this and how we put them together uh, and you can make use of Amazon Cognito in your own apps very quickly um, uh, and gain uh, user authentication uh, with very little effort. Okay, now we've seen uh, the Cognito in action. Um, let's take a look uh, in more detail at the user pools uh, and what they provide. So they provide you with sign up, user registration. They provide you with sign in authentication they provide you with a hosted user interface um, that allows you to very quickly um, uh, enable these other services like sign up and sign in uh, without really doing much yourself at all. They provide security in the form of multi-factor authentication. Uh, there are advanced security features of Cognito um, and there are uh, integrations to the web application firewall from AWS, uh, providing another layer of security. And they provide uh, monitoring and analytics and uh, integration to Amazon Cognito identity pools. Uh, more about that a little later. The uh, user pools also enable identity federation. So this allows users to sign in through a third party identity provider uh, it allows you to uh, associate one or more identities, external identities, with a Cognito user. And it allows you to simplify your application authentication and authorization. So 
uh, if you're signing in with an external identity provider, um, you don't necessarily need to worry about the details of those interactions. You um, have your integration to Amazon Cognito and Cognito deals with uh, the external uh, uh, identity provider. So uh, these um, identity federation is not to be mistaken for Amazon Cognito's I uh, identity pools, identity federation. Um, uh, but we'll come on to identity pools a little bit later. Uh, so Amazon Cognito user pools um, supports uh, a number of standard social third-party identity providers like Facebook, Google, login with Amazon, sign in with Apple. But if you want to sign in with someone that isn't on that list, you can use uh, any provider that is an OpenID Connect um, provider. Or if you're in an enterprise that has SAML identity providers, then you uh, can uh, integrate with those um, using SAML. And uh, once we're integrated, um, or once we've set up a user pool, um, we're integrated with whoever we need to be, uh, uh, the user pools will automatically create a, a UI um, appropriate to your options um, if you enable the uh, the hosted UI. Um, but it, it's really simple. You you enable the hosted UI. You forward your user to the Cognito hosted UI, uh, and then they take care of all the details of authentication, whether you need MFA, uh, multi-factor authentication, or uh, whatever else you need. And then once they've authenticated you, they uh, redirect you back uh, or your user back to your platform. And it returns a set of tokens, an access, an ID, and a refresh token um, for use within your application. So uh, the hosted UI by default is pretty bland, but you can customize it. You can, well, the first thing to do is you want to put your own domain name likely on the front of it. So if you've got example.com, you might want your identity provider at id.example.com. Uh, you can add a logo. You can see here I've added my AppSep logo to the top of this example. Um, it's simple. You just provide it a, a ping file, uh, just upload it in the uh, uh, in the console, and uh, you can provide custom CSS um, to customize the uh, the look and feel of uh, of the actual uh, forms themselves. So, if you want them to fit in with your own color schemes and things, uh, you can uh, you can do that. They provide you a template. You can then customize that template and re-upload it. And it will, um, and it will take on that CSS. So um, let's have a quick look. We've seen it in action already, but let's take a quick look at what it takes to to set up a user pool and integrate it with Delphi. Okay, before we uh, jump into Delphi. Let's uh, take a look at behind the scenes of the demo that I uh, just gave. Um, and we can see here there's a user pool um, to support that demo, but I didn't manually create that. I created that with a CloudFormation stack. Um, so CloudFormation is Amazon Web Services Infrastructure's code service. So um, uh, you can provide it a template and it will deploy the resources you need. And then when you want to get rid of the template, when you get, want to get rid of the resources and stop paying money, you can just come in here and select it and hit delete. Um, so uh, if you want to have a jump start on that, you can head over to the AppSept AWS SDK Delphi Samples uh, repository and uh, inside there, there is a Cognito demo, um, and that has not only the Delphi source, it also has a cloud formation template for the identity provider, this identity provider.yaml, and it has a template there that you can use to deploy the resources needed for the demo. 
So let's jump back to the Cognito um, user pools. And we'll quickly run through uh, doing this manually so you know uh, how to do that. So we'll click Create User Pool. Um, uh, we'll create a Cognito user pool and we will tick uh, the uh, e uh, no, let's just tick uh, username for this. And we'll say allow users to sign in with a preferred username. And we won't make the username case sensitive. Um, that's probably not a great idea. Um, let's um, uh, review the password policy that um, that they give. It looks fine, so I'm going to move on. Under the multi-factor authentication, I am going to disable that for this demo because it will just make it uh, easier to do the demo. Um, I'll leave the user account recovery settings as they are, and I'm just going to hit next. I will uh, uh, leave the, uh, the self-service sign-up enabled, and I will leave the uh, attribute verification and user account confirmation set at its defaults, which will verify uh, email addresses. Um, uh, so we know that people aren't giving us fake email addresses. Um, and if you want any additional required attributes, you can come in here, oops, tick that. So let's not tick that. Um, you can specify what uh, user profile uh, attributes uh, are um, gathered. Uh, and if that's not enough, you, you can use the uh, custom attribute. Um, uh, to define any attributes you like. So uh, I'm just going to go to next and I'm going to switch on the configure uh, message delivery. I'm going to configure this to use uh, Cognito to send email. Now in production, you are going to want to use uh, Amazon Simple Email Service, SES. Um, and that allows you to configure your own domain and email addresses. Uh, but for development purposes, we can use Cognito, which is, is restricted to send only 50 emails a day. Um, but uh, for development uh, and test and demo, that's fine for us. So you only get to choose emails are going to come from no reply at verificationemail.com, uh, but that's fine. So. We're going to need to give the user pool a name, so let's uh, call it Coding Bootcamp. And we're going to tick the box to say use the Cognito hosted UI. And we are going to use the Cognito domain, and uh, that will be a standard uh, Amazon Cognito hosted domain. So it's something, uh, a prefix, dot auth dot the region name uh, dot amazon cognito dot com so here i am going to uh, just give it a prefix that needs to be unique um, within the uh, cognito region so we're going to say coding boot camp and hopefully that's available it is um, and then we're going to uh, configure our initial app client, and we're going to use a public client. Um, the difference between a public and a confidential is um, a confidential will generate a secret, um, but uh, for this uh, demo, we're going to use a public client, and uh, we'll call it coding bootcamp um, app. And then we need a callback URL. And because we're building a web or mobile application, we don't want uh, to use a web address. We need to use a, a, a custom schema, uh, so a custom URL scheme for um, for this. So we are going to use uh, my app colon slash slash demo. Uh, oh, that you within coding bootcamp. Um, and then uh, we'll say next. And then it gives us the chance to review these details. I'm just gonna skip all the way down to the bottom and then hit create user pool. So um, if I just click into the coding bootcamp 
um, user pool, you can see that we have a created uh, user pool um, ready for us. There are no users in it at the minute, but we're good to go. So here in Delphi, I'm just going to start by creating a multi-device application. I'm just going to choose a blank application and uh, we'll, we'll jump straight in with a toolbar because we want to put a couple of actions on here. So let's, uh, let's just quickly add uh, some speed buttons. So here's a T speed button um, and let's put that alongside. I'm going to quickly edit that and say that's just going to be uh, btn sign in and we'll say sign oh not sing sign in and let's quickly edit this so we've got btn sign out and we'll say sign out and then uh, we'll get a, a tcognito hosted ui and we will We'll start off by aligning that to the client and uh, it's not a very visual component looking at it right now um, because it it's only invoked at runtime and uh, it's uh, it's only invoked when uh, we call cognito hopefully UI one dot authorize. I should point out there is a login method which is very similar. It is subtly different. The authorize has some behavior relating to automatic redirection uh, between external identity providers. So I, I would default to using authorize. And just let's uh, hit sign out and let's just say cognito hosted UI one dot logout. Um, and I'm just going to save this here. I'm going to create a new folder of Nito demo and we'll just call this form uh, f uh, forms dot main and oh, uh, let's so run this and we'll uh, we'll just uh, call this Cognito Demo. Um, and then you'll see that we have an exception. So uh, this is because the Cognito component needs uh, the Edge web browser to uh, uh, function. It uses the uh, T web browser um, under the hood and um, the um, it, it, Amazon Cognito as a service is not compatible with Internet Explorer, so you have to use Edge. Uh, so I am just going to break out of this and stop that. Um, and then I just happen to have here a copy of the web view to loader.dll from the uh, from the web view to um, installation and I'm going to uh, paste that into the build directory here and uh, we'll now try running that again and you'll see we have we've got further but we still only have a blank form and if you hit sign in it's not going to do anything because we haven't configured this web view right now so let's uh, let's go about doing that so we there are three properties properties we need to require at a uh, need to set at a minimum uh, there is the domain is probably the first thing we need to do so let's let's just switch over to our Amazon Cognito console again and we're going to go into our uh, Cognito uh, sorry, our coding bootcamp user uh, pool and I'm going to go into the app integration uh, section and there is a cognito domain here I can just click the copy value button next to that and I can paste that into the domain here and then I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of the uh, of the um, uh, the console and we'll see this app client list and we will see there is a coding bootcamp app that we initially created 
we're going to go into that and there's a client ID with a copy value button there so I've copied that and I'm going to paste that into the client ID here and then I'm just going to type this in I think I remember it uh, the redirect URI uh, is going to be my app colon slash slash coding boot camp uh, so that's the that's the authorized if you if you do happen to forget it um, it will be down in the hosted UI configuration there's allowed callback URLs uh, and you'll see that there so uh, this is now configured uh, but we're not um, uh, if we just quickly run this we'll see that we will if we hit sign in we should see a, a sign in form which is good um, I um, there's nothing we can see now if we sign into this uh, there won't be anything we'll see so let's go and um, and update some user interface here to allow that so I'm just going to create some space here on the right hand side uh, we'll start with a tab control and we're going to align that to the right and we'll just make it a little bit bigger and then uh, we'll uh, get the Cognito hosted UI again and we'll put that back to aligning to the client. Then this tab control we're going to add a couple of tab items. Uh, so the first one is going to, I'm going to quick edit that and say this is going to be TI tokens and we'll just put the label tokens there and the next tab is going to be TI user info and I'm going to just put user info on that tab. Um, in the token side uh, we are going to put a string grid uh, and we'll just align that to the client and we'll call this tokens grid. And then I'm just going to quickly add two string columns. I'm just going to about let's let's make this a little bit bigger. So when the values come through, um, uh, we can see them. So uh, now we're going to need to populate these tokens. So on the ho Cognito hosted UI, on token received event. Uh, we, this will be triggered every time something is received. I'm going to just paste in some code here and uh, this isn't working at the minute because we don't have tokens. So I'm just going to uh, go and define tokens and this is going to be um, uh, read only property back to the field and it is tokens with a type of T dictionary and it's a string key with a T value uh, value and because this is a generic um, we need to import system dot um, no, not systems, system.generics.collections. And we're going to need to initialize that. So the easiest thing for us to do here is on the form, we will say um, on create, and we will just say f tokens equals t dictionary string t value dot create. And because we're good citizens on destroy of the form, we will just say f tokens dot free. So that will clean up that memory. So let's see if this works now. Yes, well, it does so far. So let's see if I hit sign in. I've got the sign in form. So I've got user one uh, that I've already created um, uh, to help us here. And. Uh, I type in the password there, hit enter, and you can see 
I have uh, some tokens and some details about the expiry and the type of the token here. Uh, this token value, or all three of these tokens uh, issued, they are um, uh, they are JWT JSON web tokens. So if you are guarding your own resources, um, you can use a JWT library to verify the authenticity of these tokens and make decisions based upon the uh, the claims within the tokens. Uh, in in this case, I, I'm just demoing using them to to later be exchanged for AWS credentials. In which case, Amazon are going to verify the tokens that we issue to it. So, if we hit, um, uh, I'll just also point out here because this is backed by a web session. If we close this and then we reopen it and we hit sign in again if the session hasn't expired we'll get uh, tokens reissued to us um, so uh, that might be surprising at first but um, uh, because it is a web interface we are talking to it uh, with a web session so if you want to clear that out you need to uh, sign out of that and that has in invoked a sign out method on the Cognito hosted UI. You see there's nothing happened on the actual UI. It has just um, it revoked all of these tokens. And if you then hit sign in again, uh, it's not reissued new tokens. Uh, we've just not updated the user interface here, uh, but it does give us an, uh, a user interface to sign in again. So let's um, uh, deal with the user info side. So if or if we go to this user info here and oh let's let's get another let's get another string grid and we'll align uh, that to the client and we'll just quickly add a couple of string columns again let's make that bigger let's select that make that a little bit bigger um, and then we're going to need to call this uh, something so we know what it is. So we'll call this user info grid. And to populate this, uh, because we don't necessarily want to do it on, on every sign in, um, because it requires more requests um, that the Cognito hosted UI will take care of for you but nonetheless it's more it's more web requests um, I'm just going to select the tab control here and we'll just uh, put a new event here so on change I'm just going to copy in a little bit more code just to save us some time and this code here all it does is if we change to the TI user info tab we just check to make sure um, that the user info is populated. So if it's not assigned, we we early exit from this procedure. Um, but otherwise, we know we've got some user info, so we do a user info grid um, update, and um, and we uh, uh, we define here. We iterate through the pairs of values because the user info that comes back from the service is a JSON value, uh, which is going to be an object. Um, so that's going to have key value pairs in it. So uh, we iterate through this and just populate the, the grid with those values. So let's, let's see uh, if we run this now, and uh, we do a sign in and we say user one, and our very secure password. Uh, so we've got our tokens, we know we're signed in. If we then go over to the user info grid, we can see um, that uh, this is, um, let's narrow that down a bit. Uh, we can see that we have a set of attributes that have been returned to us from uh, the identity provider. And so sub is basically a, a unique user ID. Um, uh, that you can use to identify, uniquely identify this um, user. Uh, we know that the email has been verified. Uh, I've verified that email as support at apposet.com and the username is user1. 
Uh, obviously, if you had populated uh, more items in the profile, um, uh, you know, when creating the user pool, uh, potentially there'd be a lot more info in here as well. Okay, so now we've seen user pools. Uh, let's take a look at identity pools or federated identities. So what do they provide? They provide a mechanism for exchanging tokens for AWS credentials. Uh, they define access for AWS credentials via an identity and access management or IAM role uh, with policies attached to those roles. You can optionally allow a guest uh, user access and you can um, configure it to allow um, identity federations through uh, social providers. Um, in the context of identity pools, uh, Cognito user pools are just another identity provider that can provide an identity um, that will allow you to exchange um, your tokens for um, a, a set of valid AWS credentials. So um, once, you've, once you have your tokens, uh, you can request uh, those AWS credentials and, um, and they will be issued to you appropriate to your, uh, to your user, whether you're signed in or uh, whether you're a guest access and so on. Um, so let's have a quick look at setting up an identity pool and uh, and what it takes to integrate within our Delphi app. So here we are back in the Amazon Cognito console. We're going to switch over to identity pools now. And you can see here that we already have an identity pool. This was for the original demo uh, that I showed you. Uh, we're going to click create identity pool here to create a new one for this new app and we get two options for authentication. We can allow access uh, based on whether a user is authenticated or a guest. So we are going to tick both of these options here. And we are also going to um, uh, select under the authenticated identity sources. We're going to tick Amazon Cognito user pool um, because we're going to connect it up to the user pool we just created. We go to next and under configure permissions, we are then going to define the roles. So we've got two roles to define the authenticated role and the guest role. So I'm just going to create a name for them. Uh, so we've got coding bootcamp authenticated. Um, and then I'm, um, you can see there is a view policy document here. Um, that allows you to preview the policy document. For the moment, this is fine. We'll we'll just uh, 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 move on to the guest role. So I'm going to uh, name it the same thing, except guest instead of authenticated. Um, and then uh, that will effectively have the same policy attached to it. Um, but uh, we're now just going to move on to next and it allows us to select a user pool. So uh, if we enter into that box, we'll see that we can select the coding bootcamp uh, user pool that we created previously. And you have to choose an app client that is going to uh, be uh, allowed to authenticate to this. So uh, in this case, in our app, we have this coding bootcamp app uh, that we have already defined. Um, and then uh, the role settings, um, we uh, uh, there are ways to customize how roles will be selected for users. So um, in the, in this scenario, I'm just going to say use the default authenticated role. You can do some clever things with rules um, and so on. So, but uh, we're just going to use the default behavior here, um, and we'll just move on. And we call it, and we give it an identity pool name, and we will call it uh, coding bootcamp uh, uh, identity identities. There we go. Oh, if I can spell, <laughs> there we are. Uh, and then we 
uh, I'm just going to hit next and it allows us to quickly review our options and I'm just going to hit create identity pool that's fine so uh, now we've got our messages that says the identity pool has been created the guest role and the authenticated role have all been created um, we could now move on and integrate this into our Delphi app. Okay, before we uh, jump back into Delphi, uh, let's uh, quickly set up a resource that we're going to access. Um, and uh, the easiest thing for us to demonstrate this is uh, using Amazon S3. I'm going to create a bucket here and we will call this bucket Coding Bootcamp Reading. So it's going to be some reading material for authenticated users to access and it's located in the US2 which is the same region as we've been working in so I'm going to just hit create button at the bottom here great bucket even sorry and then uh, inside that bucket I'm going to uh, grab um, I've got a couple of files here that I am going to upload to it and it is a uh, a guest.txt and uh, which will be readable by anyone uh, and the book.txt and we're going to make that so um, only authenticated uh, users will uh, will have that file so uh, let's just hit upload on those now to enforce those permissions we need a policy so if we hop over to the identity and access management uh, I am uh, console we can create a policy so we're going to uh, create a policy and uh, I'm going to just paste in some JSON here um, and uh, this is going to uh, say um, we want to allow people to uh, read the bucket and we want uh, to, to be able to list the bucket and to get um, objects uh, as long as they match, they are in the coding bootcamp reading um, uh, bucket uh, and any object within that bucket. So uh, I'm going to uh, now say uh, next, and then we're going to say that this is a policy called uh, Cognit um, oh no, sorry, coding boot camp uh, authenticated so this is what authenticated users should be able to do then we'll create another policy and this is going to be uh, virtually the same except for it's only specifying guest.txt um, so we will call this coding boot camp um, guest and we will um, create that policy and then we have to go over to the roles and in the roles we have um, a coding bootcamp guest and a coding bootcamp authenticated role and we are going to uh, add going to each of these and we're going to uh, attach policies so this one's the authenticated so we're going to tick the coding bootcamp authenticated policy and we're then going to add that permission and then we're going to go back to the roles and we, um, oh, sorry, we go back to the roles and we uh, use the coding bootcamp guest role and we're going to add and we're going to attach a policy and we're going to tick the coding bootcamp guest and say add permissions. So that should be everything we need to do now um, uh, with the uh, Amazon resources. So uh, let's jump back to Delphi. So while off screen, I quickly added a little bit of extra user interface here uh, to help us move along. Uh, I've added a tab for reading a document and uh, I have a book, uh, a load book button and a load guest button. Uh, so the load book button, we are going to say load document and it's going to be book.txt, which should only be accessible by authenticated users. And then the load guest, we are going to 
do the same thing except for the guest, which should be accessible to any users. So now uh, we are going to um, implement load document and that is a procedure load document and that is accepting a document which is a string and I'm just going to paste in a tiny bit more code here and this is using S3 so first of all I'm just going to quickly go and add uses aws.s3 to our unit and then back here in load document we are initializing some s3 options uh, and we're adding a uh, set of credentials to it but at the minute i'm not specifying uh, what the credentials are so uh, it's still showing up with the red squiggly here um, we uh, will fix that in a second, but for now, let's just have a look. Uh, our S3 client is being initialized with the options. We have a request being made of get object, and we are asking for um, a document from the coding bootcamp reading bucket. So if we're successful, we will load the contents of that object into the memo. So uh, let's go and fix credentials. And credentials are going to be a property, but we're just going to add in um, aws.cognitoidentity into our uh, users because uh, we need uh, to use some credentials from uh, from Cognito uh, identity pools. So we are going to say it's a property read only with a field. So this is going to be credentials and the type is an iCognito AWS credentials. Now we need to initialize that. Let's go and do that in the form create. Uh, just like we do with the tokens. So we're going to say f credentials equals t cognito aws dot credentials dot create, and we need to provide two arguments, uh, and the first one is an identity pool ID. So let's quickly uh, head over and uh, to the aws console, and we're going to copy this identity pool ID, and we're going to paste that in there. Then the second argument is the region. So that is EU uh, West 2. We can actually see that by it's the first part of the uh, user pool, um, uh, sorry, the uh, identity pool ID. So we don't need to clean it up like we did with tokens because this is a, an interface, so it will automatically be taken care of. We don't need to free anything. Um, but what we do need to do is we need to um, add in tokens when we receive them. So if we quickly go over to the Cognito hosted UI on the event on token received, we can add in a, another method here. Uh, add, add, add append to the end of the method. We're going to say uh, credentials dot add login. And this takes again two arguments. So uh, they're both strings, and the first one is going to be a provider name. And the provider name varies depending on um, depending on who the provider is. So in this case, it's uh, a Cognito user pool. So it is Cognito hyphen IDP dot the region name dot Amazon AWS dot com slash and then it's the user pool ID. So let's pop over to the Amazon Cognito um, uh, to the uh, console and then we are going to uh, grab the user pool ID from there and we're just going to append that on to the end of that. So that will be the provider name um, 
uh, for this. But the second argument, uh, this is provided by the Cognito hosted UI. It is going to be the ID token. So uh, the next thing we want to do is uh, this is effectively signing in. But um, if we uh, use the Cognito hosted UI on logout event, we can tell it to clear the credentials. So credentials.clear logins, and that will um, clear out any logins. And if uh, credentials are needed, it will reissue uh, credentials based upon the guest user access. So let's quickly run this and fingers crossed everything will work perfectly. Uh, so if we try uh, loading a guest document, guest access, sign in for your reading material. So that is the document that we uploaded. So if we now hit load book, access denied. Oh, okay. So uh, if we sign in and uh, select user one and we managed to type the password correctly um, and then try loading the book again yeah there we go so we've managed to load the book um, if we load the guest again that's great um, and if we sign out and then try loading the book we get access denied again and that is it. That is Amazon Cognito. OK, let's finish up with a summary of what we've seen and uh, um, what you can use. So we've seen user pools provide user authentication. We've used the T-Cognito hosted UI component uh, available for FMX and VCL. Uh, once we've signed in with a user on the hosted UI, you've seen uh, that we can federate the identity and exchange tokens for AWS credentials. Uh, and we use the T-Cognito AWS credentials uh, uh, provider for um, exchanging those tokens for credentials. And then you can, um, then you can use that to provide uh, your AWS credentials to any of the services you want to configure and access. Uh, so we provide um, full API access to both user pools and identity pools. Uh, all you need to do is import the units um, and the relevant units. So AWS.Cognito Identity Provider for user pools and AWS.Cognito Identity for identity pools. And once you import those, you'll have access to the clients and all of their actions. Uh, so if you want to do something uh, custom, uh, you know, building maybe your own uh, completely bespoke native user interface for authentication, you can do that, um, uh, as well as use a lot of the more advanced features of uh, Cognito. Um, uh, you'll have direct access to everything you need there. So that was Auth Made Easy with Amazon Cognito and AppCept AWS SDK for Delphi. Uh, thank you for, for joining. Please check out the samples in the repository, AppCept AWS SDK Delphi samples on GitHub. And uh, uh, please, uh, if you've not already got it, um, you can get the AppCept AWS SDK for Delphi from Get It, uh, the QR code on the top uh, with the Embarcadero logo uh, will take you straight there. Um, the uh, if you are a enterprise or um, a, or architect edition subscriber to Delphi or Rad Studio, you will have access to that uh, uh, right now through Get It. If you have any questions uh, about the SDK or have any um, uh, support requests or feature requests, uh, you can email me support at appcept.com uh, and you can tweet me at appceptHQ. Uh, Thank you for joining.
perfect session as always uh <laughs> richard's been live with us and we've been chatting away in the chat about the uh, various bizarre things both being brits as you are and uh, anyway uh, the good news is he's joining me live for a q a session we're going to talk about some aws stuff hi hi richard hello uh and patrick's saying some stuff as well eh, in the background yeah. yes we did suggest that we would conduct all our questions in cockney rhyming slang but you are not actually from london so might be a bit of a challenge for you as well <laughs> Yeah, um, it's yeah, it's uh, one of those things where we were saying, uh, it's something about being British that when you present, you kind of go under uh, this and under uh, that, and and uh, when we get excited, we talk too quickly amongst Brits as well. I think there's a, a you know a problem for Americans. I know my wife quite often uh, comments on the speed of uh, British. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, banter. That's the British <laughs> word, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Um, I, uh, great session. Uh, you've got another session. I mean, or is this, is this it? We, we actually uh, finally re reached in. I haven't delivered it to you yet. Ah, <laughs> yes. Okay. But as long yeah. as, as long as time permits, you will get another session from me for Friday. Uh, good luck. Yeah. I've got one for Friday as well. And, uh, I haven't got mine ready either. So there you go. Uh, yeah. I mean, um, I think uh, it's worth mentioning again that the, um, if you go into the enterprise edition of Rad Studio or Architect, so the, the, the bigger ones, shall we say, uh, and go into Get It, you can actually download um, your your SDK is probably the nicest way of putting it. I think components is a bit uh, confusing. And in fact, that's one of the things we brought up before is that, um, in fact, um, the space computer video is not the next one. But um, in the space computer, I show that it's an SDK, and I think you did as well. Um, I mean, you did say before there were some key points about what you because I don't think people appreciate how much work you've put into these SDKs, and it's all about the you were telling me a little bit about retries and things like that before. What, what, yeah, so so it's not just about like mapping rest requests, I mean, you know, that's a fairly uh simple thing to do, or, or although a little bit laborious, tedious, um, but. Um, what I really want to do with the SDK is one is I want to replicate the features as close as possible to the official Amazon SDKs. And then the other thing is I want to extend that in ways that uh, is sensible for Delphi. So, so I, want, um, I want to make sure that the interfaces are as clean as possible. There are convenience methods to do things the Delphi way wherever possible. Um, so, so I, I don't consider a service like when I, when I develop a new, uh, a new service implementation, I don't just map the API. I like to go over it first. I mean, so, some of them are very basic and they just need the API mapping because maybe they're used under the hood and not really directly interacted with, but like, uh, you've seen examples yesterday and today, including S3 and S3 has so many complex interactions with it that to make it really useful, you you need to have a set of uh, like encapsulated behaviors over the top of the API. Uh, so I, I I go to you know quite quite a lot of length to to make that happen, uh, and the and the core parts of the SDK as well, the way they resolve credentials, the way it reads configuration, um, the way um, as you say, it does retries and things. Uh, these these are to try and behave um, uh, as close as an Amazon SDK does uh, as possible. Um, uh, so, and that so makes it easier. For, I think it makes it easier for the examples as well because when you're looking at other people maybe using a different language, crazy, there's the, I don't know why they would use a different language, but let's say it's Python or something like that and interacting with Amazon. Because you're using the same SDK in a very close kind of um, alliance with the examples, it, it does mean that it's easier to get your head around. Well, in Delphi, I do this, but uh, I, I think it's a very, a very sensible policy to follow. And I, I, I hadn't, I'd looked at the, this stuff before, and I've been in meetings where we've talked about it um, before as well, because you're a tech partner, and uh, you know we do briefings and things like that. But um, when I went to add it to the space computer to make the space computer speak, which I did using um, Amazon Poly, uh, which is AWS Poly, which is one of your other SDKs that you've got, 
I went from zero to using it within 10 minutes. And, uh, and it, it, you know, I keep saying to people, I may be the developer advocate, but that doesn't make me the best program in the world. I'm just a regular guy, you know. So if I can do it, I believe that other people can do it as well. And, uh, and it, it's just uses AWS dot and then whatever that the, uh, the service is. And I, I found it very easy. I looked at the code and I was impressed with the code as well. It's laid out, um, you, you know, very sensibly. And I, I know you get people in Embark and Air looking over and you're probably thinking, I better make this look good. But uh, but uh, honestly, you know, you, you, your code is fantastic and, and you're a smart guy. Um, we are uh, just a little bit of a, a selling uh, point here. So uh, I looked at my badge to remember. If people scan this uh, this um, QR code here, I'll go and get a special offer um, because we're, it's running across the bottom of the screen as well. But um, if you're on an older version of Rad Studio, like Delphi, oh, well, it's not even Rad Studio, but Delphi 7, um, because I know lots of people are, you're not going to use these components. You know, uh, What's the earliest version you can use? It's quite a way back, isn't it? XE something. Um, well... I originally started developing this. Um, I originally started developing this back on, I think it was, I think it was ten two or ten right three. Um, so a couple of couple of years but, old version. At that time, I at that time I did try to make it even more backwards compatible. So it may be that it goes back further. I generally don't test that far back now. I test on. Right current version minus one yeah uh, i mean we, we encourage tech partners not to to try and support for it i mean it's very tempting i know some tech partners maybe if they're struggling for sales or something like that then they don't want to you know oh i must support every version back to delphi 4 or something crazy like that but first of all that's a very onerous task there's a lot of differences between versions you know like delphi 7 and xe versions but not only that, um, you know, even 10.2 is four or five years old, I think, or something like that. So uh, you're starting to get into, you know, we've added so many new features that you really should be looking at later version. <coughs> if they go for that offer, <coughs> scrolling across the bottom there, pardon me, um, you know, you, you, you're going to get all the capabilities. And if they are, uh, get an enterprise version, then these components are there. Um, but they should still go to your website and and have a look at what's going on because I, I think that um, y you know the facilities that are offered um, with Amazon are very difficult to ignore. It's a very compelling um, system that they have. And uh, and Polly, when I used Polly, it was just well, this is really easy. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't difficult. Oh, I wonder if I can get it to do a female voice like the Star Trek computer. Yes, it sounded just like it. Oh, okay. Well, if I can do this female one, can I do the male one? And I realized that you'd mapped all of the names in a nice little constant as well. So I could see, you know, in your comments, because you've used XML doc or something like that XML to doc. document the uh, uh, method so that, you know, code completion and all the rest of it offers up the um, the things that you need to, um, uh, to, to make it easy for me to understand what voices were available. <laughs> so, you know. And I even stole your example code, so well done. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. yeah. Um, there, I was going to say, I'll just say that the next session, I do also talk about uh, so uh, about moving into um, the like extending gradually into the cloud. How to take existing things to extend there, kind of like what you've done with the uh, space computer, where you've taken your app and you've just moved it, uh, moved it that bit further into. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, it seemed to make sense to put a space computer into space, so <laughs> or at least the ether, or whatever we call the cloud nowadays. But, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's great. It's a it's a very good, um, a very good uh, SDK, and I, I think you know it's very comprehensive. And I know you're working hard, you know, on all the many many facilities that Amazon offer. Um, you've got a lot of respect inside Embarcadero. I know you know um, first program managers speak very highly of you as well. Uh, and uh, if anybody wants to see some examples of what you can do with Delphi uh, when you put your mind to it, you're one of those guys. So, you know, well done. We, we appreciate your efforts. 
Okay, so we didn't do any Cockney rhyming slang, did we? So there you go. <laughs> and uh, I think we slowed down enough that even Americans can understand us. I'm an American myself now. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I appreciate it. Um, okay, well, thanks a lot, Richard. Um, and I'll see you in the next uh, um, session when you come along on Friday, I think it is. See you so Friday. I'll be there. Oh.